Hey, what's up, guys? It's Tim O, Tim O Paints, and in today's video, I'm going to talk about the fastest way to paint a garage. So stick around and don't go anywhere. Hey, welcome back, guys. Uh, don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you see anything you like in this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, before we get into my tips and tricks on painting a garage the fastest way possible, if you guys are thinking about starting a paint business and you need help estimating, I do have a free estimating guide, and I'll leave it linked in the description below as well as the pinned comment. So make sure you guys check that out, and let's get into the video. So this project is an interior garage. Now, a lot of uh, houses in my area, when they're built, they don't always finish the garage. What they do is they just sheetrock it, and it's a raw sheetrock project. And what you got to do is you got to come through and prime it. So I, I, I do these pretty often, to be honest with you. And I've done it several different ways. I, I've done it by hand. And by hand, I mean by brushing and rolling in everything. But the, the problem is the process is pretty extensive because you're dealing with raw substrates. And you have raw sheetrock, and it's the paper side of the sheetrock that's showing, and as well as raw taping mud and tape lines and, you know, et cetera. So for me, I always opt into spray because I think that this is the fastest way. Um, there's always a lot of debate and toss up, which is faster doing it by hand or by spraying because the amount of wrapping that goes into getting an area ready for spraying. But in this case, a garage, really, there isn't a whole lot of wrapping. You can see on the floor, we chose to go with rosin paper on the ground or a construction paper on the ground. And the reason being is you could sweep all of the overspray because you're going to be spraying multiple coats. Um, as, as this house goes, we did, we did three different coats of paint, uh, one coat of primer, <clears throat> which technically I guess is not really paint, but one coat of primer and then two coats of paint. And, uh, there's a lot of overspray and fallout when you're spraying these different materials. And also on top of that, we were dealing with raw substrates that had to be sanded down. And when you sand down that mud, the taping mud is really fine particles and that stuff just floats and it gets everywhere and it's super like baby powder all over the place. And if you lay down drops or plastic, you run the risk of tearing the plastic and it you can't really sweep it up because the plastic will bunch. And then as well as when you're spraying, the plastic like wants to flap around and stuff. So really the fastest way, wrap off the floors with some rosin paper. Uh, rosin paper is the best because it does have some protection against moisture. So if you do spill or anything, the brown paper, not so much. If you take anything away from this video, being the title saying, you know, the fastest way, just go ahead and do the prep work. And it's not going to be a lot, you know, wrap off the areas that you don't want to get paint. Now, some some garages will have water heaters in them and you don't really have to go crazy and wrap the water heaters exactly perfectly. Let me cruise through here and see if I can find a footage of the water heater wrapped. So sometimes it takes a long time to wrap the garage, but there's going to be clusters of equipment. Like, for instance, here are these appliances. We have the water heater. I didn't wrap the water heater super tight to every little, you know, uh, pipe and every little fitting and anything that's coming off of the wall. What we did is we just kind of do like a blanket. We call it a tack. And just tack it near as close to the actual appliance as you can get. And then that way you can come back later and you can sand down the tape line. And see, it's just it's just loosely wrapped around this. Um, another thing to keep in mind is do not wrap your water heater tight. It needs to be able to breathe because you have combustion going on in there with gas and stuff. And you can create some issues. So when you do wrap up a water heater, don't leave it overnight. Don't do it so tight that it can't breathe. And uh, make sure to remove the plastic if you're ever going to leave the premises because you can definitely create some problems. So if this video helps you guys out, give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you guys are thinking of starting your own paint business, but you're not sure where to start, or you're not sure how much to, to price your jobs at, click those links below. There's a lot of tools there to help you out. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.